Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with uh, a new video series that I've decided to do. Um, it's actually based on a poll that I did on the YouTube channel where a number of people said they'd like to see some videos about using the Mission Editor. So um, this one is going to be a fairly basic uh, introduction to the Mission Editor. If you've never made a mission before, then this is where you want to start. Uh, if you're an experienced DCS player and you make missions all the time, in the mission editor, then you may want to give it a miss. You probably won't learn very much here, but let's get started. So the first thing you're going to be presented with is this new mission settings dialog, which is really just a way of deciding um, which countries will be on which side of the mission. So which countries will be red, which countries will be blue. Uh, there are some presets you can choose from. But really, if you're just making a simple mission, uh, probably leaving it in the default is fine. Uh, the one thing you will notice is that you get to choose which map to use, depending on which maps you own. So you will want to make your selection there. We're going to stick with Caucasus because it's the base map. All right, so now we just actually have to let the mission editor load. And now we're presented uh, with an overview of the map. So uh, the first thing to note about scrolling the map is you use the right mouse button to move the map. Uh, we're going to move up here to the top right hand corner and I think we're going to make our mission up in the Mozdoc area. Uh, just maybe because it's a bit lesser used part of the map. So the first thing to notice about the mission editor is that if you find using the mission editor is a little bit odd, you're probably not alone. Um, the mission editor is what my mother would have called an acquired taste, which was how she referred to things that I didn't like the taste of, but that she thought was good for me. And that's pretty much the way the mission editor is. You can do a lot of very powerful things with the mission editor once you know how to use it, but it isn't um, always that easy to use. And, and I think, uh, I don't know, but I think it feels to me very much like a tool that was developed by the developers when they needed to make missions when they were developing the game. And then it kind of morphed into a product that was actually shipped with the game uh, when it was released. And so it has a few conventions and ways of doing things um, that are a little bit odd because they were never really defined, designed from a defined user interface. Things like the um, the waypoints are zero referenced, which is a very programmer thing, but not something that, that you normally see in released software. And just a lot of the interface elements don't kind of hang together. Uh, there's no right click context menu. Um, there's just a few things that, that it just feels like an interface that was not really designed from the ground up um, for, let's say, the ease of the user experience. So if you find it a little bit odd, uh, you're probably not alone, and that's probably why. But that doesn't mean that you can't do some really interesting things with it, so you shouldn't be put off by that, I don't think. Uh, but because of that, I'm not really going to go through this in the way that might be standard, you know, explain all of the interface elements and what they do. Um, I think instead I'm just going to stick to kind of functional descriptions, how to get things done that you might want to do in the mission editor, or really I should say how I do the things that I need to do in the mission editor. Um, you will probably experiment and find your own ways of doing things because there's a, more than one way. Uh, the main thing to note is that you get some menus across the top, which we don't use very much, and then you get some buttons down the left-hand side that we do actually use a fair bit, some a lot more than others, I guess, which is typical. So today we're just going to do a really simple mission. Um, we're going to start uh, in Mozdoc in an SU-25T, and I'm going to use the 25T just because I know that everybody can access that. And we're going to place a single vehicle target, and we're going to plan to take off from Mozdoc, find the target, and uh, drop some ordnance on it, because, you know, this is an air-to-ground channel. So, uh, <clears throat> There's Mozdoc, and uh, we're just going to zoom in here with uh, the mouse scroll. We're going to use the right mouse button to move ourselves over the Mozdoc airport. And we'll zoom all the way in so we can actually see the airport from above. We're going to go over here and click the new plane uh, or add an airplane group button. As you can see, it brings up a dialog box here on the right. Now, the first thing we have to do is pick the right country because the country will control the airplanes that are available to us. So since we want to fly the SU-25T, we're going to select Russia here. 
And then we can go and click on this, the uh, drop down box and pick the aircraft that we want to fly. And in this case, we'll find the SU 25T. Okay, so once you've selected the aircraft, there's a bunch of different settings and check boxes that you could uh, take a look at, but we're not really going to need most of them today. Um, the one thing we do want to do is set the skill level to client, which will actually allow us to fly the plane. And now we need to go back over to the map and zoom in and decide where the airplane is going to start on the map. So now we just have to zoom in and decide where we want to put the airplane. Uh, but there's a little bit of a procedure involved here. So I can take the aircraft and just click on the map and put it anywhere on the map. But when I do that, it starts at a waypoint that is called a turning point waypoint, which means that it starts in the air, which is not what we want because we want to start from the ground in this mission. So we have a number of different options for that. Uh, when we select the type of waypoint. For instance, we could select take off from runway, in which case the aircraft snaps to the runway. But I want to take off from the ramp, so I can click take off from ramp, and it will pick uh, a parking spot. You can see this is the parking spot over here. Now I can change that, and, but this is sort of a, a little bit of trial and error at this level. Oops, we went down here to the left. This isn't a very effective way of figuring out where we want to put ourselves. So it turns out there is another little trick, which is that if you zoom in, you can actually see the number of the parking spots. So let's pick parking spot number 25. Uh, yeah, I think 25. So let's pick 25 and we'll scroll down. We'll pick 25. Now our aircraft is at ramping uh, ramp spot number 25 but if we leave it at takeoff from ramp it's going to be cold start and i'd rather have a hot start today so we click take off from parking hot and now the aircraft will start on the ramp but it will start started up so that we can just taxi out to the runway okay so i think we're pretty much done there we can just zoom out a little here Oh, one thing that, that you'll notice now is now that you actually have put the aircraft on the map, you can also select player. The difference between client and player is that use client if you've got more than one aircraft that you might want to try flying. Player uh, is if you've only got one. I have no idea why that switches when you put the plane on the map, but it does. So uh, I guess the next thing we have to do is figure out where we want to put our target. So let's zoom out a little bit. Take a look. Uh, I think we want to put it somewhere over here, pretty close to the airport. You can see there's a bunch of roads we can put a vehicle on. So this is actually probably a good time to take a little bit of a look at the different ways, uh, the different kinds of map that you can see uh, in the mission editor. So right now we're using something called the alt or uh, alt altitude map. Um, and this is because it's basically a contour map. So you can see if you zoom in, you can actually see the contours of the ground. If you're familiar with reading a contour map, this looks very familiar. If you're not, um, this probably isn't the video to help you, other than to say the brown lines are all lines of constant elevation. Uh, and when you get a little bit used to it, you can kind of visualize what the ground looks like. For instance, we're looking at a ridge here. As you pull back, the contour lines get less and less visible and you just get more of an overhead view. So there's a bunch of, there's three different ways you can look at the ground. Then other than altitude or elevation map, we also have a sort of standard cartographic map. I don't find this view particularly useful. Uh, so I don't really almost ever use it. The other one you can use is the satellite map. So the satellite map is useful because it gives you a lot more detail. Uh, it shows you exactly what the ground is going to look like in the game flattened out. Uh, it doesn't have any altitude information, though. It only has the textural information about exactly what you're going to see. But sometimes that's very useful for deciding exactly where the buildings and the trees and the roads and things are. So, for instance, when we zoom in here on the this map, we can see there's a nice little spot up here where um, it's on a road. And it's also where four fields meet. So it's a fairly easy spot to identify. 
Um, so that looks like it might be a good place to just put a vehicle down because then we'll know where to go looking when we take off uh, in our SU-25T. So we'll put a vehicle there and we do that by clicking on the Add Vehicle button, strangely enough. Now, same thing, we have to go through picking what uh, country. So we're going to pick the U.S. So it's a Blue Force vehicle. The game does not like it if you drop ordnance on your own side. So we do want this to be the other side. And again, there's a whole bunch of selections here that we could make that we're just not going to worry about for this very simple mission. What we are going to do is um, we're just going to pick unarmored. Well, this is where you get supply vehicles and that sort of thing. You can see there's a long list. We're just going to pick a nice, fat, juicy tanker truck. And we're going to put it down here close to the intersection of these fields. And we're going to select its waypoint as being on road. And that will make sure that it's not only on the road, but lined up with the road. Okay, so we can see that it's there, the intersection between those fields, there's where our aircraft is, so it's not very far away. Now, if we wanted to at this point, we could make the vehicle move by giving it some more waypoints, where a waypoint is just another point that it will drive to. Uh, if we give it just one waypoint, it will be stationary on the ground, on the road, and I think that's what we want to do for this simple mission. Looks like it's in a good spot. Now, the one thing we do have to do is go, um, back to our aircraft because we haven't put any weapons on the airplane yet. And now that we know what we're going to be attacking, I think we can decide what weapons we need. So to do that, we'll have to go back and click our aircraft. Ah, okay. Here's an example of one of the maddening things with the mission editor. Because on the right, on the uh, dialog box, I have clicked, I uh, have the button add clicked under waypoint. Wherever I click on the map, the mission editor thinks that I'm adding a waypoint the vehicle rather than selecting the aircraft. Um, this is just a classic example of one of the conventions of the mission editor that still drives me nuts. After all this time, I forget about that. So um, first of all, we're going to have to clear the uh, waypoint that we didn't want, and then we're going to have to go and select the aircraft. So first we come down here and click delete the waypoint, and then we click edit instead of add. And now we can select the aircraft. Simple, right? Now we're looking at the aircraft again. And so now we can go into the weapons loadout panel, which is this little dialog box beside waypoints. And we see that we have uh, basically a diagram. We have a whole, well, we have a whole bunch of predetermined loadouts that we could select. Um, I'm just going to make a custom one for this mission just to show you how it works. Basically, you can see you have a diagram of all of the hard points on the aircraft here and then boxes for each of them down here. So what you do is go to the box that you want to put uh, a weapon in and you right click. It brings up a dialog box of all of the different weapons that can actually be mounted on this pylon. So today, I think we're just going to put a couple of 250 kilogram bombs on the inner pylons. Those will be fun to see if we can take out the tanker with those. And maybe we'll put some rockets on the pylons next to those. So we can click here and look at the rockets available. We could do the 2.75 inch ones like the 80 millimeter ones, but you know, let's live large and actually uh, select some 130 millimeter rockets. So we'll put one pod here and one pod here. And I think we're ready to go do some damage in our frog foot. Oh, the one thing we can do is come down here and select the livery. So maybe um, we'll select just the uh, Russian Air Force standard uh, color pattern. And uh, we'll be ready to go uh, out and fly our very first mission. Yeah, I think all of that looks... Pretty good. To go fly the mission, you get a couple of different options. Um, you can use the menu up here under flight and click on fly mission, or you can use this uh, green button in the middle of the uh, button bar on the left, 
which is also fly mission. Now, as soon as we hit the fly mission, it's going to ask us if we want to save our work, which we usually want to do. And then when we click yes, it's actually going to ask us to um, give it a name. And so I just need to figure out where I want to stash this one. We'll call it miscellaneous. Come up with an incredibly informative name so I can remember what the heck this thing is. Uh, mission editor, first mission. Okay. And now we go out and get ready to fly. And you get all of the usual information. We'll, we'll show you how to update all of uh, this information in a later video. And then we uh, load the mission. And eventually we start and whoops, as I have my throttles cracked, we're actually starting down the runway. And, and I'll be honest with you, I'm sitting at my desk doing this and my cockpit is over beside me. So I got to go reach over and haul the throttles back here and eventually coast to a stop. Uh, so that's a little exciting way to uh, get started. I think this is probably where we're going to leave it today, folks. You can see there we've got our bombs, we've got our rockets. I'm not going to fly the mission. I think the next installment of this, uh, we'll fly the mission and then we'll talk about ways of kind of adding a little bit more flavor uh, to the mission. Uh, for now, though, I think uh, we're going to leave it there. And uh, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.